Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting from beautiful Costa Rica in Escazú on June 6th, a Sunday in 2021. And we are through most of the first week of June. Tomorrow will be seven days that we have spent in the month of June, if you can believe it, that the year is nearly half over. And it's, it's almost a shock. <laughs> it's almost a shock. But uh, nevertheless, an exciting week once again awaits us. And this time we are having the second and last eclipse of this particular season. So where do I begin? Let's start with that eclipse. That eclipse will happen at 19 degrees of 47 minutes of Gemini. So that's the end of the second third of Gemini. It's sort of in the middle of Gemini, okay? And it means that it is a new moon because the last one was a full moon. This is a solar eclipse. The last one was a lunar eclipse and a total lunar eclipse. This is not a total eclipse. So one of the, th there's some very interesting things about this eclipse. <laughs> so one of the things is that it happens at the North Node. Now, if you recall what I've said in the past, eclipses happen when the sun and the moon come to the nodes. And it usually means the two of them at the same time. So two weeks ago when we had an eclipse that was lunar, the moon was at the south node and the sun was at the north node. And this time, you know, we're closer. We are not right at the north node. Uh, the last eclipse was closer. Um, but what's happening now is that the sun and the moon will be together at 19 degrees of Gemini at the north node. And so wherever that placement in the zodiac of 19 degrees Gemini falls in your chart is where the eclipse is happening for you. And each of us has a place where it's happening, one of the houses that we're, we're experiencing. And so what we need to focus on now is what we learned at the last eclipse. Remember, eclipses come in at least pairs, sometimes three. And so right now we're having two and we're going to be finished, but when we have this one on Thursday the 10th, um, we are going to look back at what we learned two weeks ago on the 26th of May and what we gained from that. So what was it that you were made aware of that needs to sort of be let go of in your life? That does not mean that in two weeks you're letting it go. You know, if you're saying, well, you know what, we decided to sell our house. That doesn't mean that you turned around the next day, got out of bed, put an ad, called a realtor, and you know, you put your house up for sale. Um, maybe you did, but um, it doesn't mean that whatever you decided to let go of is going to be gone by this Thursday. It means that there is a process in place that you started and came into your awareness about the 26th of May. And so this is a very interesting, very interesting set of eclipses because we are not just experiencing the sun and the moon and the north node in Gemini. Mercury is in Gemini and Mercury is retrograde. So where Mercury falls as it's in its process of retrograde motion is right with the eclipse. And in fact, the sun in its journey to the eclipse with the eclipse is going to conjunct Mercury. The moon will conjunct Mercury sooner. So what's going to happen is the eclipse will happen and it's 3.52 a.m. Pacific time. So it's like, you know, around mm, almost seven in the morning Eastern time, right? For wherever we, wherever you live in this region of the world. So, okay. So then the moon meets Mercury two hours later, and then the moon makes a square to Neptune later that morning and then goes void. And then the sun meets Mercury. So Thursday's a busy day. Now, what did I say? I said, the eclipse happens, the moon meets Mercury, the sun meets Mercury, and then the moon squares Neptune. This is all a story. And, you know, 
this is this is a story and this is a huge story <laughs> and the saga continues let's reflect shall we mercury is involved in this eclipse mercury is in the sign it belongs in gemini mercury is retrograde so it's in its own sign it appears to be moving backwards from our vantage point on the earth and it's involved in the eclipse this is about communication. This is about intellect. This is about knowledge. This is about information coming forward. This is a powerful amount of information and knowledge and intellect and articulation and all things surrounding the mercurial nature. Eh, Mercury is a little witty, a little effete, a little, you know, tricky, can be a little bit of a trickster. And then it's involved in an eclipse. So it's not just moving, it's connecting to the eclipse. Now, Mercury's story has been involved with this eclipse all along. Why? These eclipses, both of them. Why? Because on the 22nd of May, and you'll remember I said this for the last few weeks, Mercury spoke to Neptune in a square, which is a challenging relationship. So there's what you think and what the greater vision is, what you visualize and what the bigger vision is, the vision beyond the vision, what you are comprehending and then what your spirit and intuition know and are telling you. Now, I have had some very interesting conversations in the last couple of weeks and continue to have interesting conversations with people. And some of the things that have come up are over and over again is that this is we're at a turning point we're at a turning point i've had conversations with people i've never met before and we start talking it's like Whoa, the energies right now are intense we are at a turning point so much is happening to us on planet earth and we really need to sit up and pay attention so ha huh, mercury is talking to the sun and the moon on thursday when they are in the eclipse it's only hours later minutes later okay they are Mercury, therefore, is part of this eclipse. Okay, so we're not just having an eclipse. We're having an eclipse with Mercury. Mercury's conjunct the eclipse. It's the three planets together. And so maybe for a moment, you know, you know what eclipses are. You get eclipsed. You get, oh, no, I can't get in touch with this person. Oh, no, someone said something to me, and, and it doesn't make sense. Oh, no, I... I don't know what's happening. You know, I can't wrap my head around this. And then it becomes clear after the eclipse kind of moves on a little bit. The moon moves on off the sun. And then you go, oh. So what, <laughs> what's happening is Mercury gets involved. Mercury starts having a conversation with the sun and the moon. And then what's been happening in these last weeks is that Mercury first, chapter one, had a conversation with Neptune on the 22nd. And yesterday, Mercury again had a conversation with Neptune. And Mercury is now going to trigger the conversation that the sun and the moon are going to have with Neptune. Okay, Mercury will come back for the last time after its retrograde is finished on July 5th or so and have another and final conversation with Neptune. So what started on the 22nd of May and then continued into the 26th of May and what continued in these past few days and what's going to happen this week? It's all related. So don't think these are separate events. This is all one big story. It's a novella. It's a novel. It's a chapter of your life. And it's so important to pay attention to the details, to the information you're being given, to what people are saying. You may say, I had this conversation with so-and-so and they said this. And then I had a conversation with somebody else and they said the same thing. And then funny enough, you know, yeah, what is it all? Synchronicity? Yes, nothing is coincidence. Nothing is coincidence. And it's all synchronized right now. Some very powerful synchronicities are happening. We need to sit up and pay attention. So that's part of it. Now, what on earth could Neptune and Mercury be talking about? Neptune is the planet of spirituality, the planet of illusion, the planet of film and, and images and photography. And, and when Neptune and Mercury start talking to one another, Mercury says things like, 
you know, what do you think? And Neptune doesn't necessarily answer. <laughs> and, and one of the things that we have to do is like tune in deeply. So imagine, imagine trying to, mm, I don't know, sometimes, you know how your internet goes in and out sometimes? Like you're having problems with the internet, it goes in and out. That's Neptune. It's like, wait, I'm trying to get this information. I'm trying to send this email. I'm trying to get this website to load, and it's not. And my internet's slow and whatever. That's kind of what's happening because Neptune is mysterious. Neptune is not all clear. Neptune is, I'm reading this book, and I have to read this sentence three times over just to understand what's really going on here because Neptune is not entirely clear. Now, Neptune and Mercury three times is going to drive a message home to you. And if you got the message the first time around, lucky you, then you are continuing on your path and able to collect more information about whatever it is you're going through. And so there's some very deep, profound things that are happening that are not on the surface, that are deeply, deeply happening behind the scenes that are deeply uh, attached to our individual purposes and that have to do more with universal energies rather than material energies. Um, as I always say, and as I have said before, and as I will continue to say, is that things happen in the field before they can happen in matter. And so when you start to wish upon a star or when you start to imagine things and visualize stuff and reach for the stars and reach for something different and visualize something in your field and you're like, I really want this. I really want this to happen. I really want this transformation in my life because Neptune is an outer planet and it asks us what we want to visualize, what we want to transform. And you, you become this thought. It's just like it's thought. That's chapter one and then chapter two and then chapter three. What's happening? You are being given some information that was almost a secret. You are being given information that w wasn't obvious to you before. You are being given information that you're like, I, I need to sit back and process this. And what I find is very interesting about this is that Mercury and Neptune, you know, they talk to each other throughout the year, but never three times, like rarely, okay, not never, but rarely is it three times in a challenging relationship. And so each of us is getting a challenge, but each of us is being, being given information about our life that is vital. And we need to really incorporate that, assimilate that, um, work with what information is leaking through. This, Neptune is in water, okay? Mercury is in air. It's coming from the field, Neptune, into our brain, into our consciousness. We are getting told something. And I've been told a few things uh, in the, by spirit. And that's what you have to listen to. You have to listen to your intuition. You have to listen to spirit. If you have a spiritual teacher and they're giving you some, and they're good, and they're a good spiritual teacher, and they're giving you some good information about your life, you have to pay attention. One of the things that's so important right now is we listen and we, you know, sift out what's right and what's not right. And in the process, we're going to become more aware after this is all over. After Mercury finishes his retrograde on the 22nd, after it finishes dancing with Neptune on July 5th after it leaves Gemini so these are different posts on the road different signposts on the road first there's the direct station then there's the last co connection to Neptune by square then there's Mercury leaving Gemini by the time Mercury leaves Gemini on the 11th of July we're going to have a whole new set of details and information that we're working with and it's so important that we pay attention and use this information. We are being given information. We are being told um, something. And it's time. It's time for something new. Now, when we have an eclipse at the south node, which is what we had two weeks ago, 
there is something that we're letting go of and we're being made aware of time to let go of something. This isn't any old thing anymore. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, I just have to let go of the thought of myself as da-da-da, right? Well, I always used to think of myself as this. Now I've got to sort of switch my thinking a little bit and think a little more bigger about, you know, what, I, what I'm capable of and what... It's, it's like that thought it exponentially. It's a turning point, and I've been saying this for weeks. And there is a massive, massive amount of healing and turning things around going on in the earth right now. And we have to pay attention to what's going on. And there are subtle messages. There are subtle um, thoughts and, you know, subtle subtle messages and subtle, you know, articulations that we're getting from the field, that we're getting from our own um, consciousness. And our consciousness is being raised because that's what Neptune does. And when it's attaching itself to Mercury like this, or Mercury is attaching itself to Neptune three times, we are getting layers of information that are deeply important to move our lives forward. But they have to, you know, you don't move your life forward without being conscious of it. It's like, oh, I, I just moved my life forward. <laughs> no, you, you, you are becoming aware of something. And each of us is becoming aware of something. So this is profound. This is a profound time. And this isn't just any old, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, we're experiencing this, you know, dance of Mercury and Neptune. Um, the eclipse is going to square Neptune. So Mercury is doing its dance, and then the eclipse is going to square Neptune. So, wow, how about that? You know, it's not even just like Mercury giving us the information. The eclipse is saying, hey, wake up. The direction is in the Gemini direction of your chart. The direction is the North Node. This is where the fulfillment is. You've got to do this. And it may take you till the next eclipse period to, you know, really make some progress, but that's okay. You've got to be aware of this and start working on it. The eclipse is also mm, making a wide try to Saturn. And Saturn is the pl planet of duty and responsibility and discipline and hard work. And Saturn went retrograde not long before all of this started. You know, it went retrograde around the time that Mercury was talking to Neptune and before the first eclipse, Saturn went retrograde. This is important because what's happening is that we are being asked to go back, look at stuff that we've been thinking about since February, and we've got to move our lives forward, but we have some work to do. Work, okay? Things aren't just going to glide on over to us. That would be nice. No, we're being given information on how to move forward. And this isn't any old eclipse this is an eclipse that's going to square neptune so the message that you're getting with mercury if you haven't gotten it yet something is going to come in and tell you very clearly this is it you're going you're going forward and hopefully you've embraced it enough and not you don't feel like you are not um uh, you know you're left out in the cold you've embraced it you've embraced it enough so that you're not um being shocked by this eclipse because sometimes if you're not paying attention, eclipses come in and say, hey, wake up. And especially when they're entangled with outer planets. So again, this eclipse, it isn't the strength of the other one because it's not total and it is not uh, touching the nodes as closely. But it is strong enough because it's squaring Neptune. And then a few days later, and we're going to talk about this more next week because it will be right at the time we're meeting again. Saturn and Uranus are going to square again for the second time this year. Now, they did this back, I think, in February. Now, on the 14th of June, they are going to square again. So there's another story, a bigger story, that is about, you know, holding on to the past and breaking through to the future, okay, in a nutshell. They won't do this square again until December 24th, okay? So now it's going to happen June 14th, and then six months from now we're going to get it again, and that'll be the last time. 
but boy, oh boy, are we each on a path. We are each on a path. Do you know what your path is? Are you aware of what story is unfolding in your life? And it may be a story that you've wanted to unfold for a really long time and you haven't been able to accomplish. Saturn's about accomplishment. We needed the information we're receiving right now about ourselves, about our lives, about where Mercury and Neptune are falling. We needed this information in order to complete the tasks ahead, in order to complete the expansion that Jupiter has asked us about, in order to complete the breakthrough that Uranus has told us we need to do. Okay? So we need to pay really close attention because Neptune is subtle. You know, it's like... It is an outer planet, okay, sure, but you may miss it. If You might blink and miss it. Sometimes Neptune comes in and you're like, it erodes, you know? You're like, what was that? Wow, look at where I got. Hey, how did I get here? And I, I always say to clients, you know, when you're having a Neptune transit, Neptune is, you know, you think you're getting in your boat, because Neptune represents water. You think you're getting in your boat and you're going from point A to B, and then somehow you are on point Z and you don't really know how you got there. So that's Neptune. Like, why and how did I wind up on this far and shore? That was Neptune. And Neptune brought you there. So now this eclipse, it may be a twist in the, the saga that you are living because this eclipse is dancing with Neptune. And Neptune is going to give us some information or enlighten us to some information that may be particularly helpful along this journey that we're on. So I really feel that people are getting um, information. They're being told information by their intuition, by their life, by, you know, a healer, a teacher, um, that is opening a door for them. And I've talked to a friend the other night, and she's also got some information that she was shocked about. It didn't shock me. Um, it was good information about her capabilities. And I said, <laughs> and none of this surprises me, none of it. And she's like, I I'm sitting here, I just don't know what to think. None of it surprised me. Very powerful person. I think she was shocked to learn that. So it is asking us, Neptune's asking us to embrace our the message we're getting. It's asking us to believe in ourselves. Believe in ourselves. And that's what the eclipse is telling us, to believe in ourselves. And to believe into this story, this next chapter of our lives that's so important that that is so ready to open and blossom and it's so important right now and you know what your story is and if you haven't really gotten it straight as to what story uh you're living right now then i suggest you sit down with yourself close your eyes and just go deep and ask the universe to show you. Or ask whoever you like to talk to, to. A saint, an archangel, God, goddess. Whoever they are, ask them to show you. Ask your higher self, whoever, to show you what it is that you need to see. Energies are shifting profoundly right now. And we are all being called to our mission. Each and every one of us, have we not been living our purpose, we are going to be turned in the direction of our purpose. And if we are falling short of our purpose, we have to, um, you know, get clear on what our purpose is. Um, and if you're very much in your purpose, your purpose is deepening, it's connecting, it's, wow, I really feel in like intense stuff is happening to me through my purpose. Don't be afraid. What I'm also seeing is people are like, you know, I don't know if we're going to get through this. You know, it's, wow, I, I, this is powerful. I don't know that I can accept this. Yeah, you can. You can. This is very powerful. We're in a very powerful place. Um, it's important to clear out any of the blockages that are getting in your way 
So like I did an emotional clearing on myself today because I said, you know, I, I know what they are. I know what the blockages are. So I was able to sort of tap into uh, that uh, suitcase, <laughs> that baggage <laughs> of emotional blockage and say, okay, this has got to go. And, you know, I, I, it's important to connect with that part of yourself that is holding yourself back. We all, ah, we all have fears and anxieties. We all have blockages. Everybody's got a hindrance. Everybody's got a little self-sabotage going on. Find out what it is. Ask to be enlightened as to what it is and move it forward. Don't get distracted. Yesterday was very interesting because not only did Mercury square Neptune, but as I spoke about last week, we had a Mars-Pluto opposition and the moon got involved. And if you watched my Instagram on Friday, I talked very much about moon, Mars, square and, you know, the, the moon and Mars squares and involved with Pluto and it was a T-square in the sky and it was a very uh, complicated aspect. Yesterday was complicated. If you lost your temper or you wanted to lose your temper. And I really felt like I didn't want to lose my temper. And I'm thinking, what could really annoy me? Well, something annoyed me. <laughs> and you know what? I owned my power in it. I let myself get a little angry. I showed my anger ever so slightly, but firmly, and did not attack. I was just truthful. And very quick and to the point. And I cannot say that it felt good. Uh, and I, I realize it's it was it was an owning of power on some level, but it was also a great distraction because it you know was had the symptoms of a bigger situation at hand. And if you felt that yesterday, and you felt that you are um, you were annoyed or you had an argument or something ticked you off, um, there's a deeper resonance going on to it because Pluto's involved. It was a good time to do deep work. I did do deep work. I made sure of that. But I also recognized my annoyance yesterday as a distraction from the real stuff that I'm supposed to be doing, the real story of the Mercury-Neptune, the things that are coming forward right now Hey, I'm just like everybody else, right? I'm like you. I've got to deal with this too. You know, I, I'm not above it just because I know astrology. I just expect it more. <laughs> you know, I listen to me. And, you know, believe me, there are times when I say, oh, that's not going to bother me. And it does. And I'm like, duh, Deb, what did you think? What did you think? <sighs> so, you know, I hope and pray for each and every one of us. I'm including myself in that, that we are enlightened and empowered by this eclipse squaring Neptune. That's what we're seeking, enlightenment and empowerment. We are not seeking to be the victim, okay? Neptune can turn things into victimhood. Don't do that. Please don't do that. It's not, um, it's not good. It's not good. You know, it, it means that you're not only your power and it's so important right now to get excited about your future get excited about your future even if it looks daunting and things right now could look like how am I going to get there like I can't move from here to that ah. you know from where I am now how do I get to where I'm I, I you know Neptune provides vision remember I said earlier vision beyond the vision what are you seeing? And if you got that vision, do you know the, the steps you have to take to get there from where you are? <sighs> you know, there was a song many years ago by R.E.M. <laughs> called, I Can't Get There From Here. <laughs> and that's starting to play in my head right now. I can't get there from here. Yes, you can. You have to. You have to get there from here. Don't worry about getting there tomorrow. And don't get upset that you're not there by the eclipse on Thursday. <laughs> Just know more information is coming your way. Keep track and keep motivated and don't fall back and say, ah, oh, that's not going to happen. I, I was just foolish. I just got fooled by Neptune. No, 
Neptune is a truth bringer, and when involved with Mercury, it's really a truth bringer, you know. So you're you're getting a piece of the truth right now, even if it seems fantastic. And I don't mean fantastic in the in the wow, fantastic. I mean fantastic in the little bit of a fantasy way. It it may sound like a fantasy. There's a spiritual part of this that each of us needs to tap into. Now, if you're if you're not a spiritual person, then what part of what part of the message are you not seeing or not getting? So do be careful. Do be careful with these energies. They can trick you. Um, Mercury, Neptune can be a little tricky. Um, you might think, don't rest on your laurels. Don't fly by the seat of your pants. Pay attention. You know, um, Saturn and Uranus are asking us to do some work. Do you have to do the work to have the breakthrough? Nobody just gets a breakthrough. You know, you did some work to deserve it. And um, so the most important thing right now is to listen carefully, stay grounded, really keep your feet on the ground, and listen carefully. And if you hear a message from the universe and it's telling you to go forward in a certain way because you can and you are talented. You know, Neptune and Mercury is also very talented. If, say, you're receiving a message from someone that says, you know what, you're a really good artist, and you sit there and say, oh, how can they, they're just, they're just being biased, they like me, they're my friend. No, there's a deeper message here, a deeper message for each and every one of us that we need to collect and pay attention to and hold dear to our hearts right now, extremely dear to our hearts, okay? There's something that you may have always wanted to hear, and you may be ready to leap forward in a way that you did not think you were ready to leap forward. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, so, okay? What more can I say? I can say that be sensitive, be kind and caring about yourself, really, be gentle with yourself and don't be hard on yourself. Just own it. Know that you're on your path. Love yourself and have gratitude for your for the turning point that's being given to you by the universe, okay? And the information that's being given to you by the universe. If you are betwixt and between, perplexed, confused, this is Neptune, you are welcome to contact me and have a session. Um, you can contact me at my website, thegoldenastrologer.com, and click on Book Online and choose your session. Um, I do emotional clearings. Um, I find that I regularly emotionally clear myself, so there's layers that come up. And when I start to feel a little off-center, then I clear myself again. And, um, you know, it's important to keep doing that. Um, and the vibration gets higher. You know, it's all important for our vibration to be higher. And that's what Neptune is asking us to do, raise our vibration. My Instagram is the Golden Astrologer as well, and my Twitter is at Dev Astrology. And if you are um, so interested in my blog, it's Astrologer's Thoughts on my website, thegoldenastrologer.com. And let me know how you're doing. Message me at Instagram. Tell me, tell me what I can do to help because that's my job. So I bless you all. Gratitude for each and every one of you. Thank you for listening. Enjoy this eclipse, and we'll talk next week about what the revelations have been. Thank you for listening. A beautiful week and a beautiful eclipse.